Right now, this experience of you, that's you at a core. And this is at the cause, it's not at the effect. And that's where we fuck up. We think that by getting all these things, that'll affect this experience. But these things are at the effect of this. We confuse the two. This will color your experience of the world, will color the experience of your successes. It's not your successes that color that experience. You must start with this. It's someone, for example, if you just take different emotions, if someone's negative, it doesn't matter what you give them, they'll find a way to keep you negative. It's the negativity that colors those experiences. If someone's always afraid, they're always in this fearful state, it doesn't matter where they go, they're going to focus on the things that are scary. They just see the world as a very scary place. You know, it's like we're all in this world, but we're all living in different worlds in a way. Right now, we're all in this room, but our experience of this room, our experience of this event is very different because of this. This is what colors our experience. We think we see the world as it is, but no, we see it as we're conditioned to see it. We experience it as we're conditioned to experience it. And unfortunately, most of us are conditioned, if this is 10 and this is, say, 0, to experience it somewhere down here. Never 10 out of 10. And with this, this experience of you, we'll call this your default. Because you've been this for so long, you're addicted to it. First thing to understand. And no matter what you get externally, you'll never truly enjoy it because it'll still be there. And even in terms of your default status or identity of who you think you are, you're always going to find a way back to it. Okay? There is a default, everyone has a default, whatever that default is, you're addicted to it and you will always find a way back to it. This is where self-sabotage comes from. If in your default identity you think, this is the most I can get, this is the least I can get, anything above that point, you'll find a way to self-sabotage. Right now you think, there's something in your mind where you think, <laughs> if I make more than this amount of money, that's more than I deserve, and you will self-sabotage. If I get healthier than this, it's more than I deserve, it's not congruent to my identity, I will self-sabotage. Okay, did anyone ever go from being somewhat obese or unhealthy to losing weight? Yes or no? Now, did you go through this? Where at first, let's just say you will power through, and then you start getting some results, and as soon as you start noticing a little bit of results, you're like, eh, good enough, I'm pretty skinny, maybe I can cheat a bit now. <coughs> and then you actually go backwards because you're eating more because you're kind of losing weight a bit. Yes, no? Fuck yeah. That happened to me too. I'm like, oh, you know, look, I'm getting a little bit of results. You know what, what's one little cheat meal? I can allow myself now, I'm skinny. And then you just start stagnating and slowly getting pulled back. The same with money. You start making a little bit more money than you deserve, and guess what? Man, you know that big screen TV I saw? I totally need that. And you find a way to subtly, it's not blatant, it's always subtle, spend all that money. However money you make, you're always gonna find a way to spend it all. And you'll find a way back to what you think you deserve. You find a way back to staying in this default range. The same with girls. Right now, you might think, you know what, I want a really stunning girl. You may get that girl, despite this. Like, that's what's crazy, is like with a lot of willpower and effort, you can do these little sprints outside of this bracket, outside of this range, and get it, but you'll never sustain it. You get this in spite of this. You blast through, you get that girl, and then you kind of freak out and you self-sabotage. Or, and you'll have your reasons. Yeah, oh, you know what, she was too superficial. Back to it. The scariest thing when it comes to success with women, by the way, is when an interaction goes well, not when it doesn't. Because when it goes well, that's when you freak out because you can't handle it. You can't endure it going well. You're used to different rejections. If a relationship goes too well, like I had this for a long time and let me know if you did too. You're in a relationship and things go, start going like too well and too, it's just too nice, it's too peaceful. And you're like, oh, this is boring, right? And you self-sabotage and create some drama and shit explodes and you're like, oh fuck, what did I do? You know, I had that for a long time. It's like I just couldn't resonate with that success with a relationship that stays for a long period of time. Um, or if things went too well, I'd just continuously find a way to self-sabotage. Continuously find a way to maybe focus on the other person's flaws only. And then you just never find someone you can connect with. With money, same thing. When I moved to Los Angeles, I was like broke for a long period of time, started traveling, teaching this. 
and all the money I started making, I'd just find all these ways to spend it. And it, was, it were ways that made a lot of sense. You know, like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna eat healthy now. But then you start going, you know, I need like the most expensive healthy food. The fuck, I need the most expensive vitamins. Like all these dumb reasons that in a way made sense, but the place it was coming from was trying to bring me back to this. We're always finding a way back to this. We self-sabotage all the time. This is the reason we never truly achieve our goals or get the success we want. All of you want to become extremely successful. All of you want to most likely make a lot of money. I doubt if I asked you, do you want to make a lot of money? You're going to be like, no. You all want to. What's holding you back? This. And if you even think right now about free will, we don't really have it. We do in a way, but we don't really. You have free will right now when it comes to the micro, but not the macro. Keep that in mind. Right now, you can do whatever you want. You can clap your hands, sing, say something, whatever you want to think right now in the moment. In the micro, you have free will. Not on the macro. The macro, you have free will in this range, not outside of it. You will keep being pulled back to this no matter what. That's why people get their New Year's resolutions. I'm going to lose weight. Pulled back. Wherever in your life right now, you see your pull back to. Whatever you are the most, whatever you have the most, that's your default. That's the brackets you're locked in. That's the prison you live in. And you can do an audit on your life. And some questions you can ask yourself, and I'd actually even recommend writing them down now, and give me the real answer, not the fucking right answer, is ask yourself, and here's the classic self-help one, what are the type of people you spend the most time with? What are the types of friends you spend the most time with? And not just spend the most time with, but really resonate with. Because you hear self-help. Surround yourself with successful people. And you might do that, but do you actually connect with those successful people? Or is it kind of like, oh, I'm doing it because, but you actually feel better when you're with this type of person? Do you connect more with someone who is healthy, someone who's unhealthy? Someone who's positive, someone who's negative? Me in the past, when I was extremely negative, if I was around people who were positive, it would make me fucking tired. It would drain me to be around that. It was like I was putting on this front, like, ah, yeah, but it was just not me. And I was like, oh, and then I'd leave. And I'm like, yeah, I'm hanging out with you know, positive people, but I'd feel a lot more energized and comfortable with negative people. Because then we could just fuel each other. Like, those were my people, the negative people. What are your people right now? Your closest friends, the people where you really are you, the people you connect with and you're like, yes. Is it someone who comes up and talks about success or someone who talks about gossip? What are your favorite topics? What are the topics you resonate with the most? Negativity, gossip, rumors, dissing people. That's a big one. It's like, what'll turn you on more? You talk to a friend and your friend's like, hey man, so yeah, my other friend accomplished this. And you're like, oh, that's cool. Or, hey man, so look at this guy. You know what he did? Blah, 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 blah. What gets you excited? What immediately lights you up? And don't judge yourself for it. It's just doing an audit right now on where you're at, what you're hooked on, What's your fucking defaults? What would be a way, another question, that people describe you? Do they describe you as someone who's positive, negative, stressful, fun to be around, outgoing, stifled, people pleasing, try hard, draining, energy giving? If you ask all the people that know you, if you ask your family, how would they describe you? What are the books, movies, and music you resonate with? Ask yourself why. Doesn't mean they're bad movies, but just what's the vibe of the movies you resonate with? Someone who's extremely victim mentality, someone who's extremely, how to say it? You know, say you go through a breakup and you kind of feel that victim mentality, that sadness. That person's gonna resonate, most likely, with either a lot of anger and watch all these angry movies, or all these emo movies that reinforce what he's feeling. What are the movies you really connect with? Throughout your life, you'll go through different phases, but overall, what's the general theme? Overall, what's the type of music? What's the type of books? What lights you up? What style? What closing style? What personality style? What celebrity? Just brings awareness to the identity that you have. What do you do in your free time? That's another good one. Whenever you have free time, say you have an hour free, how would you fill up that hour? Say right now I give you an hour break during this event, 
where there's no mission. It's just like, hey, take an hour break, relax. You're free for an hour. Go home, go do something. What would you do? Don't give me the right answer. Don't be like, hmm, what would impress all these people? What would I do? Just be like, say no one would know what you did during that time. What would you do before coming back here? Would it be going doing some crazy activity? Would it be something outgoing? Or would it be retreating maybe in your place? Masturbating, watching porn, going back, eating junk food, going back, sleeping, um, going back, playing a video game, watching a show, watching a movie. Whatever it is, going for a drink. What's the first authentic thing that just immediately pops in your mind? What would you do? Okay. Some other things. What excites you, just in general? Are you ever excited? When is the last time you were really excited about something? When was the last time you were in awe at something? You just saw something and you were like, whoa. Or is most of the world just very meh at this point? Whatever you see, it's cool, but meh. When was the last time your breath was just taken away? Don't judge yourself if it never happens. It just means, oh, I realize that I'm, very, I'm not that excited that often. I realize that I'm not very much in awe. Totally fine. Right now, it's just doing an audit. You're not judging yourself. You're just viewing it objectively or as objective as you can. When was the last time you did something of service or as they call it, random acts of kindness? When was the last time you did something just nice just for the sake of doing it? If it's never, just say never. What are your most common thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis? This is crazy to think about, but 90% of your thoughts today are most likely the same thoughts you had yesterday or the day before and the day before that. We have the same worries, the same concerns, the same thoughts over and over and over again. You wake up, oh here, I'm waking up today. What are my thoughts? When you're getting dressed, when you're getting ready to go out, same thoughts, same worries. When you go out to a club, same worries again, same thoughts, same self-attack, whatever that inner dialogue is, what is it? What are your most common thoughts? What are your most common emotions? Are you happy most of the time, sad most of the time? Do you feel nothing? Are you in a state of apathy most of the time? Are you extremely sensitive most of the time? What is it? When was the last time you laughed, really laughed? If not, notice how you don't laugh. When was the last time you cried? If not, realize that you don't cry. Because both are releases, laughter and crying, just different sides of the spectrum. What are your goals? What are you working towards? What kind of goals are they? Be honest, are they goals to, you know, why are you doing them? Are they goals to look good, feel good? Is it an ego enhancing goal? Or is it just a goal of service? What are some of your biggest fears? Or your biggest fear? Right now, like the worst thing, the thing you just really fear the most, you don't want to happen, whatever that is. It could even just be a rejection. It could be losing someone. It could be, um, it could be dying. It could be ending up alone. It could be abandoned. It could be being a bad person. Whatever it is, what's some of your biggest fears? What are you ashamed of? What is one of the things that you're just so embarrassed of you never told anyone? Even your closest friends, even your family. Something you just never told anyone that you only know you. You don't necessarily have to write that one down, but bring some awareness to it. Maybe it's a lot of things. Are you someone who only has a few of those really personal moments you're so embarrassed you never share with anyone, or you, are you someone where there's only a few that you share and a lot of it you don't share? How strong or how high are the filters? Okay. If you think of how much success you deserve, whether it's in health, money, relationships, what's the ceiling? How much money is too much money? How much money would it just make sense for you to have? If you met you and you oh, how much money do you have? How much money do you make? What would be an answer where it's like, that makes sense. Where's the limit where it's like, what the fuck? 
how, what type of girl do you deserve right now? If someone saw you maybe with a super stunning girl, would that make sense, yes or no? What's the ceiling? In terms of your lifestyle, in terms of your friends, in terms of what you have access to, what's the ceiling? At what point does it just not make sense anymore? What type of girl, what type of personality? Is it someone who's smart, someone who's maybe not that smart intellectually? Someone who's kind of crazy emotionally, someone who's not? Someone who's boring, someone who's interesting? What's the range, what's the ceiling in terms of your health? How healthy does it make sense for you to be? This is what holds a lot of people back too from, by the way, not drinking as much or just eating healthy. It's like, you don't think you deserve it. It just doesn't make sense for you to be that person. You don't resonate with that person. What's your ceiling? If you think back on your life, what are some of the first memories that pop in your head? Whatever it is. Right now, think back to your life. Pick three moments in your life, in your past. Boom, boom, boom. Those three moments, what type of memories are they? What type of state were you in when you were experiencing those moments? Because we remember mainly the memories associated to our default state. We'll forget all the other ones. The same as if you have a night out and you're someone who's just always kind of negative, you'll have amazing moments, but you won't really remember those. You'll only remember all the negative moments. The same applies on a bigger scale on your life. Your life, the story you tell yourself, all those moments you remember, most of them are linked to your default state. If you're someone who's very fearful even, you're probably gonna remember all those scary moments. What's the theme of the first ones that pop in your mind? Okay, just do a little audit. And the more you write down, the more you know, the better. Okay, what are your biggest flaws? What are some of the things you hate about yourself? We all have them. If there's a few things you could change or get rid of, what would they be? It could be a personality trait. It could be a, a success barrier. It could be one of the ceilings. It could be a habit. What are like five things you just fucking hate about you, you wish you didn't have? It could be that you're shy. It could be that you're not interesting. It could be even talking to a girl, you can't hold a conversation. It could be that you procrastinate and that you just can't take action. It could be that you're undecided. It could be that you just never really feel good. What is it? Five things, the first five things, make that fucking list. Beyond that, what are some of the things you love about yourself? You really love. Like your top five qualities, whatever that may be. Your top five strengths. If you have trouble coming up with five, bring some awareness to that. Okay. These are all questions that you should always be asking yourself. And most likely, some of these, it's the first time you've ever asked yourself those questions. And you might even experience resistance to asking those questions or resistance to giving the real answers. It's a lot easier to give your go-to answers. And that's what we're conditioned to. Even when someone asks you, hey, how's it going? Our default's like, good. That's pretty much it. Even if you don't feel good, you're like, good. Here we're going beyond that. We're going behind the autopilot response and we're going deeper and bringing true awareness to where we're at. This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest happiness I've ever had. It just made me finally confront my deepest fears. And we got like real deep, and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level, okay? Be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after.